Good morning, I'm Jerry Rosa from Rosa String Works. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for uh, tuning in. If you saw my first video uh, introducing you to my business, I mentioned that I was going to restore about a 1914-1915 Gibson L1 guitar and that would probably be my first video. Well, a couple things have changed. I'm still going to do that video and it'll be coming up very soon but I decided because I had a fiddle in here and it's kind of a rush job I thought I would go ahead and video that. Uh, being as I'm new at this video thing I'll do my best to try to show you how I'm going to set up this instrument. The instrument is perfectly playable as it is but the <clears throat> customer is not happy with how it plays. It, it's a little hard to play, it sounds a little harsh uh, quite a few things like that and setup is my specialty so I'm going to take you through how to set up a violin and uh, make it sound as good as this violin can sound. Now keep in mind this is not a high-end instrument this is just kind of an uh, intermediate level or beginner level instrument and so that doesn't mean it can't sound good though so we're gonna do our best to improve the sound on this and do just as good a setup as we can so uh, I'll adjust the camera here, put it down on the table where you can see what's going on. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to see the finer points of this. Okay, this violin has the name of Comet inside, which right away, if you know anything about violins, that's just some little off brand. And uh, it's got a serial number in there. But I will just tell you that looking at it, uh, it's reasonably well made. It's, there's nothing wrong with the little violin or anything. Um, there's a few little things that I would suggest right off are not just right. Um, it'll be difficult for the camera probably to focus on this, but the strings are set very close together here and there's quite a bit more width on the fingerboard so we can spread those strings out just a little bit and that will make it a little bit easier to finger up here. The action on it is actually pretty good. It's not terribly high, but there is, if you get up in the upper register here, it is quite a press down to the fretboard. So we're going to lower that down just a little bit. Because this is a beginner, um, lowering that down will just make it easier to note, easier to play. Now, once they become more accomplished, they might want it back up at a height like this. But we can address that at a later time. The other thing is that this bridge is cut a little bit weird. I mean, it's almost just perfectly round. And generally speaking, they fall off a little bit more on the treble side. They're still round, but they fall off a little bit more. And so we're going to change the way that is. We may actually thin the bridge down a little bit more. And then lastly, the sound post is almost directly under this treble foot of the bridge. And uh, that makes it sound a little bit harsher too. Or actually, it's not last. There's one more thing. We're going to change the strings. The strings that are on this are really inexpensive strings. Uh, they're harsh. They're uh, solid steel. And we're going to change it out for a nylon core set of strings, which will give it more of that gut feel, gut sound, and you know, soften the tone. So all those things together will make this sound like a little better uh, instrument than it really is. So we're going to get started right now. And the first thing we're going to do since I've got the old strings on here and I don't have to worry about breaking them first thing I'm going to do is adjust the the nut up here and, and widen this out and set these strings out just a little bit further now most of you might think I'm going to use a file for that but I'm not I'm going to use a saw uh, it just is a much faster way to cut the slots uh, once you learn the technique with the saw it's, of course is a very very fine blade saw it's actually a fret saw uh, but this one particular blade is a little too narrow even for fret slots, but it works great for rounding out these uh, string slots. I'm doing this purely by um, experience. Um, I'm not using anything to measure anything. I'm going by eye and experience. And so I'm going to loosen this string and get it out of my way. And I'm going to put my sears on here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get my light closer to the, well, I get a little more light on the subject. I, hopefully that doesn't mess up the video too bad. Looks like it's going to work. Okay, so the string slot is right there now. I'm going to move it over about a third of the distance toward this uh, outer edge here, which is going to move it over, oh, I'm going to say almost a sixteenth of an inch and still have plenty of neck left on the outside.
Now if this was a high-end instrument, I would probably just replace the whole nut because uh, we wouldn't want to have an extra slot there and, and we'll be able to get rid of most of that anyway, but uh, the way that looks, but uh, it'll still show up a little bit probably and we'll dye it and make it look better so it doesn't show up too bad. Now you see I'm rotating the saw to cut a round bottom in that slot and I'm keeping it at a pretty pronounced angle from the fretboard because the last place you want it to touch the string is right here where it leaves the nut. You don't want to have the angle flat because then it could vibrate inside the slot right there. I hope that makes sense to you, but bottom line is you want to keep it at an angle toward the peg head. And I'm not going too deep, I'm just very light strokes rounding it out. I want it nice and round so that the string will lay in there really good and lay in the very bottom of the slot too. And that looks pretty good. Now if you can see on camera, and I don't know if you can, and I, like I said this is my first rodeo with the camera thing, um, you can see this slot is much wider now than these other ones. Now I'm going to go all the way over to the other string and do the same thing go in that direction. Loosen it up so I can get it out of there. Move it off to the side. And then, again, just by eye, I'm going to move it over. Eye and experience. And I'm not moving this one quite as far because it just doesn't have as much room. It wasn't perfectly centered to begin with, I guess. But this time, I'm not going to be rotating the file too much because this is a very tiny string, so we need a tiny slot. So I'm just going to kind of leave it a simple slot on this one. And I'm just very lightly now taking the strokes just to make sure that the bottom is nice and even. And tighten that one back up a little bit. And that one actually, believe it or not, didn't move enough to hardly make a difference. It's almost the same width as the middle two strings now. It was probably a little narrow before. So now I'm going to move this D string toward the G string. And if you don't know the strings, this is G, D, A, and E. So I'm moving this D string toward the G just slightly. That would be the next thing here. And on this one, I may just end up widening the slot, just barely moving it over, because I just I don't have a lot to play with here. Again, I'm, I'm rotating the file of the saw because this is a little bigger string, got some serving on it, and and that is pretty good, probably a hair too far, so I'm still going to move it back to toward where it was a little bit by just working that side of the slot. It's not too bad, just a hair off still. I'm going to work it that way a little bit more yet. That's pretty good. And now I'm just going to widen the slot on this one and move it the A string and just move it that way just a fraction, really not very much at all. And that will make them pretty even by eye. pretty even. It's not perfect. I mean if I got down with thousands of inches and look at it, it's probably within a thousandth. I mean it's really pretty close, but it's it's not perfect. Now the thing about this is you want to make sure that you got the action pretty low, but you don't want it rubbing the fretboard. And this is about as low as you can go without rubbing the fretboard, I can tell you right now. So tune of course. 
Now, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing on this bridge end, and we're going to spread the strings out on the bridge too. That'll give it more, that'll even out the tone and spread the, the vibrations out across that bridge rather than all of them being in the center of the bridge like they are. There's a quarter of an inch space between my thing, you know, between this string and the end of the bridge right here. There's a quarter inch space between the string and this. So basically, I'm going to move it over this way a little bit, just making sure that I'm centering it on the fretboard here so that we still got plenty of fretboard to work with. But we can widen it out, and that'll help spread that sound out. Also, as I'm doing that, I'm going to recut the top of this bridge. So I'm going to mark that first, show you a little trick I use. That is, if I have a sharp pencil. This one's not quite sharp enough, so I'm going to sharpen this. I'll be right back. You want a real sharp point on your pencil when you start this. And I lay it flat right on the fretboard and use this kind of as a mark to kind of indicate about how this is probably about as low as you would ever want to set it. Um, probably won't go quite down to the pencil mark. I just use that as my gauge so I can see where it's at and where I need to go. And now with the strings just loosened up a little bit, don't have to be all the way off, just loose, where they just barely, barely play, where they pluck more than play, then you can just slide the bridge out like that. And you can see my marks along here, maybe. I don't know if that's going to show up in the camera, probably not, but there's little tiny pencil marks along the top. And basically, I'm going to work this where it falls off on this treble side a little bit, has a little bit of a high spot about where the D is, and falls off to the G then. I'll be right back. I did that with my, with just a uh, disc sander in the other shop, in the other part of the shop, I should say. And someday or another, we'll probably film all that too. But as I said, this is being, this is new, I'm new to the filming thing. And so I'm just doing the best I can right now. I'm looking for my little finger plane and I just found it. And uh, okay, my little finger plane is just like a door plane. If you know what a big door plane is where you can plane the edge of a door to get it straight or whatever, well that's what this is except that it's a very tiny finger plane and it's got a slightly uh, convex, I guess you'd say, bottom to it. So it's slightly rounded bottom and the blade itself is slightly rounded. <coughs> and that helps control how much you're cutting off of here. After you lower the height of a bridge, it makes the bridge thicker. And we want to keep the bridge relatively thin so that it vibrates really good. So now I'm going to cut off a little bit of the thickness of this bridge again. And uh, you can see the Chips are just flying off of this little thing here. It does a good job cutting if you keep it good and sharp. And basically I just want to try to keep it all in the same plane. And just kind of working it as I can here. Just all again by experience, by feel. I've been doing this for 30 years so pretty much know exactly how to do this without having to think about it. If it was your first rodeo you might have to take it a little bit slower and look at it a little bit more but I can pretty much tell when I've got it fairly flat and fairly thin. And we're doing that here. Okay, still a little bit thick on the treble side, and that's the last place you want to have it thick. You want that treble side as, well, you know, reasonably thin as you can, because that's going to help that vibrate more. You know, really, uh, when you think about instruments, it's not rocket science. There's only two things that, that make it have a sound. One of them is the strings, of course, and that's where you're going to get your metal sound. And the other one is the wood, and that's where you get your woody sound. Now, how do you get the wood to vibrate? You, you want What you're trying to do is transfer that vibration out of those metal strings into the wood. Well, it just stands to common sense reason. The thinner you get your wood, without breaking, of course, still has to be structurally sound, but the thinner you get your wood, the woodier it's going to sound. The more vibration you're going to get transferred into your wood. Nothing rocket science about that at all. 
So that's what I'm doing here. Now you can see there's a lot of wood I took off of that bridge. I mean, that's quite a bit of wood, really. And so I've got it just about where I want it there. It's pretty thin, but yet it's still structurally solid. Now I'm just going to take a little piece of sandpaper, a little better piece than that one.